Terry in the building. All right, my man. So uh, you you heading up to Nashville? You 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 rolling? Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, how you know what did you do before you got into trucking? Um, uh, technically illegally. Um, when I was fourteen, uh, mm-hmm. and I ran uh, I ran the logs from where my uncle was harvesting up to uh, our um, staging area. Mm-hmm. You know, which was usually only about a quarter to half a mile, but you know, that's how I got started in trucking, and that was also my first job. Um, okay. I went from there. I got my chauffeur's license in Florida to where I was able to run legally on the highway until I turned 18. And so, turned 18, I joined the military, went into the Navy, became a CB, continued driving a truck. Um, when I was medically uh, discharged, um, when I came back from Iraq, uh, I had plenty of money saved up, so I bought my first 379 Peterbilt, leased on to Prime. Um, and I was over there for 13 years um, until I wound up blowing the engine in my truck, and and I decided, well, let me give the other side a, chi- uh, a try. So I decided to become a company driver for Swift, and I've been here be three years in February. All right, all right, man. So let's uh let's 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 uh go back. Fourteen years old, huh? Uh yes sir. So you was you was rocking with 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 your uncle like a family owned business or type of deal or what? Yeah, um he has a uh, logging company down in South Florida and um you know I I literally begged him to let me you know let me learn the trade. Mm-hmm. Um because I I originally wanted to be one of the loggers. I wanted to be one of the guys cutting down the trees, but no, he figured, you know, that's a little too dangerous. Mm -hmm. Big, tall pine trees, little bitty me. He decided instead throw me in an old Kenworth cab over and let me drag the trailers back and forth. Wow. At 14? At 14. You know, I, you know, I wouldn't, you know, it, it, it shouldn't surprise me because I, I see kids of over in abroad that's, that's literally rocking the tr- uh, tractor trailer better than a better than the dude over here, man. <laughs> so I guess I guess is I guess I'm not surprised at that. You know, at 14, you you got your first taste of uh of of a manual shifting, non automatic, bouncing up and down cab over. How how was it? How was it being? Oh, yeah. the, how was it being in the cab over? I mean, I'm I'm sure you wasn't in there by yourself, right? Uh, no, nah, most of the time I had another uh, another one of our drivers with me because, you know, although my uncle trusted me, you know, he didn't trust me that much. Uh, so I always had another one of our guys with me. Um, and But, yeah, it was an old 70s model cab over. Uh, mm-hmm. So no, you know, no air ride. No suspension was shot. No power steering. <laughs> you know, I had a four over five transmission. <laughs> wow. So at four, so at fourteen, rock, uh, rocking. Did, did, who who did the who did the logs? The your your partner or or you? Um. Well, my partner. Or, or was, uh, was there or was there any logs back during that time? Um. Oh, there was laws. Uh, which I mean, is why logs, logs would only log, let me logs, logs. logs. Yeah. L o g e. I mean, L o g s. <laughs> God damn it! Man. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was plenty of logs, um, and you know, uh, that was also basically how I learned how to strap things down when I decided to go flat bedding was because you know, uh, they taught me how to you know, how to strap down and how to chain down those logs to keep them on the trailer. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and that was basically what my partner was there for. It was his job to chain down, make sure everything was nice and stable. It was just my job to drag that trailer up to the staging area, drop that one, grab an empty, bring it back down. Was you nope. now what nope. I meant now I know we we, we talking about logs. <laughs> I'm talking about the log books. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, the who, log book. Uh, yeah, who 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 was doing the log books? Your partner or you? Oh yeah, that was definitely my partner. <laughs> okay. It was all on his log. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So you was just uh you you was just there for the ride, learning and and all that good stuff, and then later down, you you got your chauffeur's license at what age? Um, at that time, uh, you could get it at sixteen. So uh, okay. I went ahead, 
which I think they've actually changed the law now. I think it's 18 yeah, now, but yeah. back then. But uh, it's not even a chauffeur's then, license no more, so. Yeah. Uh, but I was able to get mine at 16, um, mm. and that way I, everything was legal. I still had to do everything I had to do when I came out of the military and got my professional CDL. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I had to take the written test. I had to take the driving test, which I passed both of those with no problem because I'd already been doing it for two years. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and at that point, I was able to, you know, I was able to take the logs from the load site all the way to the mill, run my own log book, you know, do my own free trips, do all of that. Uh, and which Southern Florida, we don't really, we never really had that heavy of a DOT or even police presence especially down near the reservation. So, so I done a, you know, I was just running hard every day for the time I got out of school until about eight, nine o'clock at night. So you, so was you working up under who you was working up under your uncle or, or the company itself when, when, when you, when you got, uh, when you got to doing that? Um, well, once I started, after I got my license, my uncle let me go, let me put it underneath the company itself. So, Mm -hmm. I was no longer his employee. I was an independent contractor. Oh, okay. So, you know, I was able to, I, at 16 years old, I was able to make, I was making, you know, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 a week, and I was only working maybe 20 hours, 25 hours a week. Mm. So That's, that's good money that's what, right there. Oh, yeah, especially at a young at, age. At a young you know, age, that was, yeah. You know, and that was what, you know, that was what got me addicted to driving a truck. So what did your parents, how, how did your parents feel about you driving a truck at such a young age? Um, my grandmother didn't really, you know, like it too much because, you know, I'm the youngest. Uh, so, you know, she's protective. My, my grandfather, you know, he encouraged the crap out of me to, you know, to do it, to mm-hmm. strive for whatever I wanted to do, you know. And so he pushed me to do it. And so he told me as long as I was comfortable doing it and as long as I enjoyed it, Keep doing it. Uh, that's what I did. That's what's up, man. All right. So, so from there, you 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 decided to go to the uh, to the service. What what branch of the service you 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 rocked out? And thank you for your service, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I joined the Navy. Uh, I was uh, I was a CB for uh, let's see from ninety nine until oh, yeah eight years for Just those a under eight years. When for, for those that don't know what a CB is, let let them know what it is. Um, that's construction battalion. Uh, okay. We're the ones that you know, we build everything that a lot of the other branches uses, barracks, uh, bridges. Basically, you know, basically we're the Navy's version of the Army Corps of Engineer. Okay. Okay. All right. So you uh, so you've been in you you rocked out. You did a couple of tours. Uh, did you, you know, while you was in there doing your tours, did, did, did you yourself see any action? Um, saw action a couple of times. Uh, there was a few times where, uh, where we were doing our work. Um, mm-hmm. we would take, usually it was a little, uh, just pop shots from, uh, from the Taliban. Um, every now and then we did. Uh, a couple of sites we actually took uh, mortar fire at, but of mm. course the Marines took care of that for us, so we didn't really have to worry about it. Um, but uh, the event that got me, you know, knocked out of service was um, we were running, uh, running out of Kuwait, heading up to, if I remember, uh, if I'm remembering right, we were heading up to Baghdad, and um, we hit a uh, first we started taking mortar fire, and then we hit an IED. Uh, when my truck hit the IED, you know, it put it on its side and mm. really screwed up my back. Uh, and the damage was just enough to where they weren't going to give me my combat status back. So wow. you know, my but, only uh, you know, my only options were to stay stateside and take a desk job, or you know, they could discharge me. And I decided, well, I could probably do better if I was just discharged. So I let them medically discharge me and. Like I said, I bought my first truck and started running again. Well, you, well, I'm, I'm glad that you're here. You know, to, to tell the story of what happened. Did, did you, uh, while you was in the service, did, did, did you ever pull your gun out on anybody, or, 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 or no? Um, not on, 
uh, not really on anybody, uh, mm -hmm. mainly because of the areas we were working in when we did take fire. Mm -hmm. you know, most of the time, the only thing we could do was lay down suppression fire. Oh, okay. um, because you know, we're one of the few, uh, we're one of the, the CBs are one of the few uh, units or MO Navy, of course, is you know, water and air based. So, um, oh, go so ahead. We, you know, so we do have, you know, we do have uh, training on how to engage an enemy, you know, and all that fun stuff. But uh, all the engagements that I was in, most of the time it was just us laying down suppression fire while, you know, usually the Marines took care of business and handled the threat. Oh, okay, that's what's up. So, so after, you know, after you got out of the service, did they, are, are you, well, of course you're a veteran now. Uh, you'd still get, uh, do you still get any other, other perks other than, other than the hospital? Do you get, do you, do you get some type of, some type of severance pay or, or, or anything from the service that to be medically discharged? Um, uh, yeah, I still get a, I get a nice little paycheck, uh, once a see, I get one once a month, uh, for, uh, for my injuries and all that. Mm -hmm. Uh, cause when I came out, they did qualify me as 80% disabled. Okay. Um, so I still get a nice little paycheck once a month and I can't really complain about that, but you know, unfortunately it's really not that much, even though it does help pad the bank. Um, okay. but you know, I try when I came out, I did try to just, you know, just relax and live off my sever or basically you know, what we would consider a severance, my VA benefits, but that lasted about six months, and I started going cabin, you know, cabin crazy. Get up and get going. All right. So you did. So the money that you saved up while you was young, I'm sure, because you know, while you was young, 14, you know, up to 16, you know, you you ain't had too much too much nothing to do except for you know buying clothes or whatever, whatever. But you know, you you kind of taught yourself to maybe I should put majority of my money away at a, at a, such a young age. Um, so you was able to save up all the way up until your military time. You came out, and first thing you did was buy a truck. <laughs> yep, uh, I bought a uh, uh, yeah, nineteen ninety nine three seventy nine Peterbilt. Mm -hmm. um, had an eighteen speed uh, nine over nine transmission, uh, six hundred cat. The truck was designed for heavy haul, um, and I paid. I think I paid ninety thousand for it. So why um, not? Why 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 not? Why not a brand new truck? Because you know a lot of these cats that's coming out here that want to buy a truck. They want to, you know, they they want their first truck to be a brand new truck with the bells, whistles, and all like that. Why, you know, why why did you decide on uh on 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 the peak that you did at that time? Um. Uh, well, uh, one it was. Uh, it was a friend of the family, um, which was basically the only reason why I bought it off of him. Um, he was going through uh, cancer treatment, mm -hmm. and he was selling off a lot of his equipment. And you know, he made me a deal on that 379, and I'm like, look, it's helping me out because you know, I got a truck now, and I'm helping him out because this is going to pay to keep food on his table or help him yeah, pay his medical his, bills. So, right. so, okay. so it was a win-win. So it was a cash uh, cash deal. Went in there, shook the hand. That's that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So now you got a uh, so so now you got this big truck. You you getting it ready. You you getting it ready to roll. And uh, now that you got everything set, uh, you 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 leased on with who? Uh, I leased on to Prime. Prime was uh the first company I went to. Why why Prime? Um. I had a couple of my cousins, you know, were also owner operators that worked for Prime, and mm -hmm. you know, they, you know, they told me, you know, how the terminals were, how their dispatchers were, um, and they really enjoyed the company. So I'm like, hell, I'll give it a try. Let me give Prime a call. Let me see if they'll, you know, let me put my truck on, and you know, mm -hmm. and if I don't like it, I'm an owner operator. I can easily go somewhere else. Okay. Um, but. You know, they paid me so, you know, they paid me real good. They treated me real well. Um, their mechanics knew how to handle, you know, a 600 cat. You know, so I wound up sticking around for 13 years. 
Now, 13 years with Prime as an owner operator, you would probably still be with them if your engine hasn't haven't blown. Um, well, it was uh, with my engine blowing and my dispatcher you know, retired a couple of months earlier. And you know, with him retiring and the engine going out, I'm like, you know, that was you know, to me, it was like, OK, maybe this is a sign from the gods that maybe it's time to try a different route in life. Mm-hmm. And. You know, that's when I decided, because uh, I was living in Glendale, uh, Glendale, Arizona at the time. I'm like, let me just go on down the road to Phoenix there and, you know, talk to Swift. Now, you, and, now, now as an owner, now as an owner operator, why, why didn't you just get the, uh, why you just didn't get the uh, engine uh, replaced? Um, because it was a 99, uh, the only engine that I could find, the newest engine I could find that would work with it was a 2001 uh, mm-hmm. Which still wouldn't allow it to be hooked up to ELD. Oh, um, you didn't want it and, to be a lot. You you didn't want ELDs. Yeah, you know, and Prime was fine with that because you know I was grandfathered in. Mm-hmm. So when everybody switched to ELD, my truck couldn't handle it. So I was grandfathered in. I got to keep running paper log. Um, but you know, unfortunately, when the engine blew and all that, you know, I had I had no choice. I had to. You know, it was either get a brand new truck. Um, mm-hmm. or you know, just become a company driver. But either way, I knew I was going to have to run ELD. All right. And, so, uh, so you, I mean, well, of course you said your 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 dispatcher at the time retired. So obviously you you had a good you had a good rapport with with your dispatcher, which made your time with the company pretty good. I always say that you know I I, I say that literally. Like if you have a good rapport with your dispatcher. Your time with the company is gonna be fucking awesome. If you get if oh, yeah. you if you get a if you get a bum fuck for a dispatcher, then yeah, you your time with the company, even though that the company, you know, treats you good and all like that, but if you get a bum fuck for a dis a dispatcher, you you're not gonna be happy there. And that's the and pretty much that's what happened. I mean, you wasn't what, was you able to, you know, maybe try to rock out with a with a different dispatcher to see if it worked on the company side? Oh yeah, I would have been able. You know, I could have easily been able to, you know, switch over to the lease side or company. Uh, they even, um, I could have even went, like I said, bought another truck mm-hmm. and continued running, but just under a different dispatcher. And you know, like I said, you know, I'd been with him for, you know, he'd been my dispatcher for thirteen years and. I'm like, you know what? Let me just try something else. You know, if it fails, I can always go back. But um, you know, I got here to Swift. You know, they treated me real. You know, they treat me real good, so I couldn't complain. Uh, when I run OTR, my dispatcher, uh, when I ran OTR, was real good. Kept me loaded. Kept me moving. Kept money in my pocket. Was and then what, when I switched. Was Swift? Was Swift? Was the choice because they was in the area? Or was was there another reason behind Swift? Because I mean, you know, coming look, I mean, even even I came in the game six years ago, knowing that Swift was like the butt of all trucking jokes, the butt of all this and the butt of all that. But when I got when I got into the game and start, you know, noted taking notice, I mean, it's it's not a bad company. It's just that. Unfortunately, some of their bad drivers just gave them a bad name. Do you, do you oh, agree yeah. with that? Yeah. Oh yeah, uh, and I you know, I basically blame it on the size, you know, because especially now that we uh, since Knight took over, I love the fact that they say we merged. We didn't merge; it was a hostile takeover. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're now the largest company, you know, trucking company in the U.S. And of course, just us being larger. We got more rookies. We're going to have more accidents just due to the sheer number of trucks we have, you know, and especially with the sheer number of new drivers we have. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of pads the numbers. You know, if you just look at the numbers instead of you know looking at it as you know how many trucks you know, per thousand are damaged or put out of service mm-hmm. uh, each year, which when you look at it, you know, from the DOT standpoint. You know, we are one of the safest companies out here. Um, and like I said, you know, they treated me real nice. And you know, I, I went to Swift. I talked with them first. Uh, Schneider and JB also had terminals there in Phoenix. I also went and talked to them. 
but mm-hmm. you know Swift was the one I went to because you know they were get, they were offering me what I was looking for, uh, and they were also paying me real good. So okay. of course I took the deal. So. Okay, so that's what's up. So uh, so thirteen thirteen with Prime and what? Eight- I'll be going on. This is my uh, this will be my third year in Fe- oh, third uh, when year. February rolls around. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So three years with Swift. So what? Uh, other other than uh, other than that, man. You know, you you know, I I met you off a of, I met you off a of TikTok, and um, you know, you you came you you started uh creating you know content for the for the platform. Why did you Why did you choose TikTok to create your content on versus uh platforms like Instagram and YouTube? Um, mainly, you know, for me, TikTok is just, you know, just easier. Um, it requires less editing. Uh, and I had TikTok, um, back when I was, uh, when I was with Prime before I switched over and came to Swift. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually took a little bit of a hiatus because, uh, of my PTSD and other issues. So I wound up, you know, just taking a break, deleting everything for a while. And then when I came back, of course, you know, it, I was still here with Swift and you know, I decided, you know, to change up my content a little bit and you know, get back to doing what I do best, which is, you know, I try to make people laugh because, you know, me yeah. having PTSD, you know, I know how it is to, you know, especially being PTSD and a former business owner, I know the pressure, mm-hmm. you know, and I know the stress. So I'm like, you know what, if I can do anything to help alleviate that stress on somebody else, I'm going to do it. Now um, you, you're not taking, you, you're not taking st- you you really not taking TikTok seriously, like I mean, not too seriously because you know I follow you and I I you know I enjoy the content, but you you got a lot of butt hurts in your comments, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. <laughs> no, and uh, I you know, and I've even you know, I even made a you know made a video about that you know where. Even me working with Swift, my dispatchers know, my management knows, everybody at Swift knows I make fun of the company. Mm-hmm. Even though I work here, I make fun of the, the company. And make fun of the company, so, uh, that's fine. You know, make fun of the driver, but make sure those, you know, making fun of him doesn't become insulting him. There you go. So, just because of what's on his door. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, you know, I've actually made jokes at Damn It Mike and uh, Wild Indian, you know, because we're all brothers. You know, those two guys are owner operators. Me being a company driver now, you know, and we can throw jabs at each other because you know we're not thin skinned and we know it's all jokes. I can poke fun at them; they can poke fun at me, and everybody gets a good laugh at it. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So I caught the video. I want to make sure if this was you. Uh, I caught the video, and you. Uh, I want to make sure as you that you talked about somebody called the company on you. Is that? Is oh that, yeah. Uh, what? 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 What happened? Uh, what? What uh, happened? Because see, here's here's the thing with me, and 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 people doing that bullshit. Number one, you know, I I don't understand why people does that shit. Like. Literally, dude, you just because you don't like what the fuck I have to say or or do for that matter, you you literally going to call and mess up my livelihood because you don't like what I got to say, (laughs) you know, and that's why I don't. That's why when people ask me at when people ask me now, like, yo, lockout, you know, who you drive for and and all like that. I'm like, bro, I'm. You, you you don't need to know who I drive for. But what I will do is pass you along to the people that is looking for job. I mean, that's looking for drivers. It doesn't necessarily have to be my company, <laughs> you know, but uh, but uh, but no, I you know, that's why I don't let you know, I, I don't let people know who I drive for. I don't put the company. I don't put the company name out there, especially if I'm driving for them currently. Now, if I don't drive for them no more, then yeah, I'll, I'll put the name out there all day, every day. You know, uh, JNR Swoogle, U- US Express, Wooster Motorways. You know what I'm saying? I- I'll put them companies out there, oh, yeah. you know, 
all day, every day. But for my current company, no. You 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 don't need to know who I drive for. For what? I may say something that you might get butt hurt, and next thing I know, I I get a call from my safety director or somebody at my company talking about, hey, lockout, you you know they over here saying that you said something about the company or yada yada yada. I don't need that shit. So what what happened with <laughs> what what happened with you and and was it a video that you did off of TikTok? What what happened? Um, actually it was another, uh, another driver's, uh, comment section. Me and him were discussing, you know, in the comments, things that we used to do back before ELDs and all that, you know, mm -hmm. talking about, you know, how we used to blow scales, mm -hmm. run the back roads, mm -hmm. you know, all that good stuff, you know, running multiple logbooks. And somebody's like, well, uh, how would you like it if Swift found out you did this? I went, and I said, I told him, I went, call him. <laughs> really? I mean, and, this is you know, back in the day yeah. shit. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> This this is back in the day shit where that shit was 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 on a regular, bro. What you talking about? Yeah, and of course, you know they called safety. Safety called me last night, and they're like, you know, and they're laughing. You know, they were already laughing before I even answered the phone. Because I answered the phone, they're like, "Hey, Terry, you know, what's up?" I'm like, oh, "Not much. I'm sitting here and making." He goes, "Yeah, we had somebody call in on you saying that you're running multiple log books, you're blowing scale houses, and all that." Oh, and like I'm like really? I kind of figured that was going to happen. He goes, yeah. And they're like, he goes, and the center asked me, goes, how are you running multiple ELDs in that truck? When I don't know. <laughs> you know wow. We sat on the you know, we sat on the phone for 20 minutes. Me and you know uh, the guys at safety just laughing about what they had center said because apparently mm -hmm. you know, they don't understand how grammar works. And, Oh. Wow, that's that's uh, that's crazy. See, that's you know, like I said, TikTok is 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 fucking a pendulum sword, man. You know what I'm saying? You you try to come on there, you try to do good content, you try to throw some good information on there. You know what I'm saying? And then you got butt hurt people that don't know nothing about the fucking industry or don't know nothing about you to come on there to you know come in your comment session and start. Uh, start going off at the mouth, man. Oh, yeah. You know, and when I came on to Swift, you know, I've talked to a lot of people at safety when I first came on because, you know, my time with Prime, you know, before I came over, I already had close to, you know, I already topped 2 million miles mm -hmm. in 13 years. You know. And they're like, how did you do that? I went, well, you know, not all of it was, you know, to the book. You know, there was a few weeks where, you know, Things got a little shady, and you know I had to uh, edit the comic book a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they already knew you know, I'd done this shit before. Right. Or, you know, I'm on the Swift and ELDs. The only things I got with the ELD is we have a few legal walk uh, workarounds to where I can adjust my time, but mm -hmm. it's all legal. There's nothing I can do with that ELO, uh, ELD that I used to do. You know. I right. can't go back and edit my drive time or anything right. like that. You know? <laughs> wow. That's, that's, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So do, do you have a, do you have a YouTube page or, or you, you, you just 100 on TikTok? Um, I'm just 100 on, well, I'm just started a high notes, uh, page as well. Uh, mm -hmm. but mainly I'm just on, uh, on TikTok. I figured, you know, if I ever got a real big following, maybe I would move over to, you know, move over to YouTube. I might even start an Instagram. But, you know, right now I'm just having fun on TikTok and you know, enjoying it. Like I said, I'm going to continue to make fun of my company. I'll make fun of other companies, too. I don't care. <laughs> well, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. You, 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 as long as you, as the, the, this what is all what it all boils down to be. As long as you get that, get that product to wherever you need to get it to safe. And and you getting and you getting paid for doing it. That's that's all that matters, man. It, nothing nothing else matters. Oh no. Oh, and so I've said or told people before. I'm like, you know, I can run all day if I wanted to, or you know, I can run for five or six hours and shut it down with the account I'm on right now. It just depends on. People. Like, you know, of course I won't have the hours to do a complete turnaround, but I'll get back to McDonald's George before i shut down you know just running up here to nashville and back that's what's up are and you are you are you still from are, are you still residing in florida or you you move or you, or you move from florida um i still live in i still live in florida i just run out of uh i run up to macon 
every uh, every week. I do my runs for the week, and then I go back home for the weekend. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So what was like? So other than you know, I want to rewind it all the way back before we get on up out of here. Um, coming up in Florida, man, because you know I talk to a lot of you know I I know I, I talk and I know a lot of cats uh, down in Florida. What what part of Florida are you out of? Uh, I live down in Big Cypress. I'm I was born and raised on the reservation down there. Okay, okay. Now, Florida, as you already know, is like a tourist, you know, tourist state, you know, with with Disney and 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 all them. So, you know, as a young man coming up, was, was was you able to, you know, partake of any of any weekend excursions to, you know, to Disney to to uh, Universal every week? Uh, well, not every week. Uh, during the summertime, you know, my grandparents would, you know, would take me to, you know, take me to Disney World, take me to Universal, Sea World. Um, sometimes we'd shoot up to the Panhandle and, you know, go to the Gulf Area up there in, uh, I want to say it's in Pensacola. Um, but, you know, yeah, we've done a lot of, especially during the summer times, we've done a lot of things, you know, around the Florida area, going to, of course, all the major attractions that all the tourists like to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, during the summertime, mainly because of the heat and humidity, you know, my uncle always slowed down the logging, you know, during the summertime. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and that was when I got to do most of my, you know, most of the family time. You know, so we would do all that traveling around the state and, you know, just see different things, go to different places and, you know, just enjoy Florida. Just as a kid, uh, you know, 14 you know, making that kind of money, doing that kind of job, man. Did your parents uh, try to micromanage your money at one at, at one point? Um, no, because uh, uh, the way my grandparents you know brought me up was you know it's my money, you know I've you know, I've earned it, I can do with it what I want. Uh, they encouraged me to save it, um, and just because of the way I am, you know, mentally. I like to always save for the future, so mm-hmm. you know, I would usually, you know, I'd go and go to Walmart or Target or back then even Sears uh, and buy cheap clothes and save everything else. Even though my, you know, my grandparents would encourage me, you know, go ahead, buy, you know, you want the Jordans, go ahead and buy the Jordans. You want the Justin boots, go ahead and buy the Justin boots. You know, you got the money, you can do it. But you know, just the way my thinking was back then and still kind of is. I wanted to save as much as I could, so I would buy the cheap shit. That's you know, even up. though my, you know, you know, my grandparents were, you know, encouraging me. Hey, you know, if you want it, you can have it. You got the money. You know, never really oh. micromanaged uh, my money. There you go. You're back. All right, man. Well, Terry, man, thanks for stopping by, man. I really do appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? You are a citizen now, so if you have anything else, uh, you know, you want to promote or anything like that, you got the number. You can reach out to me and, you know, come on and chop it up and share other stories, man. All right. I'd love to do that because, you know, maybe one day in the future, because I got plenty of stories, especially when I was uh, with Prime, that I would love to tell that I really don't have the time to on TikTok without breaking it up into a five-part miniseries. Okay, that's what's up. Well, we can, uh, like I said, we can we can come back, uh, like what next week or a week after next or whenever you're ready to tell it. All right, all right, bro. You take it easy. Thanks for stopping by, and I appreciate you. You stay safe out there. All right, you have yourself a good one. All right, bro.